Hello, Shumai. Welcome to my cold Welsh garden. The witch hazel is flowering and the mahonia is flowering and everywhere is covered in this frost. Bird's water is frozen, so I'll have to come out and do something about that. The pink willow is coming out, even though it's so cold. And I wandered lonely as a daffodil. I did plant a lot there. But only one's come up. And there's Peter and Paul. And there's Ivy. And a very frozen pond. And there's the thermometer. What does that look like to you? Minus one, minus two. Not so cold. Minus 16, I think it was, up in uh, Scotland. The uh, brassicas look a bit sorry for themselves. I filled up the seed feeder. And the mealworms. And I've scattered sultanas and suet pellets all on the ground round here. So it's really quite trampled by the birds. And on, on the path and on the steps and over there on the lawn. And then I put little piles around the place for the little birds. This is on an old brick that was made for an industrial village up the road called Penwicht. And I think you can just about make out the name on the side there. And I also put a little pile of mealworms here. I call this the dinosaur footprint because I think that's what it looks like. And I will just add a few sunflower seeds. So just to remind those of you who are in the UK that next weekend is the Great Garden Bird Watch run by the RSPB. Uh, so it'd be great if as many of us as possible could take part. So I thought um, before then I would put the trail cam on the various places where I feed the birds and just share the sort of birds that come into my garden. These are obviously the bird feeders. And the most common birds on the bird feeders are sparrows, the little brown bird on the right, and blue tits. There's one blue tit there at the mow, and another one's joined in. And that's a great tit. And these are long tail tits. These are just little balls of fluff with long tails, and they go around in a gang, so... I'll look out one minute and there won't be any and then the next minute there'll be half a dozen and then the next minute they'll all be gone again. But not all birds like to visit the feeders and if you look very carefully down on the ground on the slope you'll see there's a tiny little brown bird just sort of foraging around in the weeds. Well that is a wren. And then these are the birds that I feed on the lawn. These are blackbirds squabbling over the uh, sultanas that I throw there first thing in the morning. Most of these will be winter visitors. Some of them will be residents. And then these are the starlings. These come down in a great cloud. And then just as quickly they fly away again. 
and that one in the middle is a female blackbird. She's brown and she doesn't have the yellow bill. And then the starlings all come down. And then just as quickly they fly away again. And this handsome young man is a pied wagtail and he feeds off the ground as well. They're quite common actually in the UK, uh, in the country and also in towns. And in towns they you find these communal roosts where upwards of 50 pied wagtails will all roost together, often somewhere warm, like um, where the air conditioning or the, the, the sort of vent is of a, of a building. And you often get them roosting in trees in uh, supermarket car parks of all places. This lovely bird is a grey wagtail. These are not so common as the pied wagtails. They live along riverbanks usually and nest, they nest in the steep cliffs uh, along rivers and we're very close to the river here so that's how they come, they come into my garden. Both the wagtails feed on the mealworms either the ones that I scatter or the ones that the star, uh, sparrows drop from the feeders. And this is the robin, of course, who's all over the garden. And this is a blackbird. He feeds off the ground. He's just, just showing off for the camera, showing you how handsome he is. And this is the female blackbird because she's brown and she doesn't have the yellow bill. And these are some birds that are feeding on the dinosaur footprint. That's a blue tit and another blue tit feeding on the mealworms, starling on the step there. And another blue tit. And this is a great tit. He's bigger and smarter, really. He has like a waistcoat. He's got a very prominent navy line down his front and he's just, just showing it off to you. And this is the smaller, smallest of the, uh, the tits. This is the cold tit, but he doesn't hang around. He's flits in and out. And the robin again. Robins can be te really aggressive little birds. They tend to guard their food from uh, particularly other robins, but they'll have a go at any bird, really. He's eating the suet pellets. And uh, there's one robin chasing another robin away. I'm just looking round to make sure nobody else is going to come and pinch his food. There's some starlings on the step and this little robin I think is meh, maybe not going to defend his food from the starlings. The starlings are, are bullies really and they do make a terrible mess. And this little grey bird is a dunnock or a hedge sparrow. And on the step there is a song thrush. Uh, he's a very rare bird now. I'll tell you about him later. Food is very important in the winter for birds, but so is water. Uh, if there's no water, if the water is frozen, then of course the birds get very thirsty. And uh, you can see that this black bird is a very thirsty bird. And as well as drinking the water, the birds need the water to bathe in to keep their feathers in good condition. And that will help them to get through the winter. And this is a little group of sparrows 
Sparrows are very into communal bathing. They, they like to, to get in the bath all together. And then when the starling has a bath, everybody else has a shower. And this is the song thrush. He's having a drink. Like I say, this is a very rare bird now. I think they've decreased by about 80% over the past 20 years. He obviously wants to have a bath, but uh, I think the water's a little bit cold for him. But he finally takes the plunge and uh, gets into the water. They very rarely come into the garden, only when it's very cold. They live in the woods around the place and I can often hear them. They have a beautiful song, but uh, as I say, they don't come in the garden most of the time. So it's a treat to be able to see him like this. And then the last video is of Mr. Fox eating an apple on the lawn. It was just an old apple that had gone over and I cut it up and put it out there for him. Certainly seems to love apples. Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the wildlife that comes into my garden. I hope some of you will be able to take part in the Garden Bird Watch next weekend. It's a big citizen science project and I think it's very helpful in telling us what's happening to the birds in our gardens. I have done a couple of videos before about birds and I'll put a link into those. Uh, so if you're interested, please watch them. And uh, I hope I look forward to your company next time. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Au revoir.